damn man i just yesterday recorded that episode that had maggie smith in it at the uh, at the end and and i woke up today and saw that she passed away rest in peace to her um i've always said though that when someone lives to be that age it should be more of a celebration of life than sadness because 89 is an incredible age to live to she had a hell of a life on a slightly lighter note, we are again continuing with Series 11 today. This is now Series 11, Episode 3. <laughs> Emberdale's definitely going to eat this stuff. I love this crowd! Hello and welcome to TV Burp. Tess gets her bottom patted on Strictly. Oh. Bearded lady on signed by Katie Price. Because of what's happened, obviously, the arguing. Oh. <laughs> and blasphemous Abby on Downton. Good God Almighty. <laughs> Where's my to-do list? I had a list of things I need to do on a pad. What's got into her? <laughs> Why, that's private! What was on doctors? <laughs> I must say, I did learn a lot from new evolution show Origins of Us with Alice Roberts. Although I'm not sure that everything she said was entirely true. In order to be a good runner, you have to have a good, strong butt. You cannot run very easily as a biped without a big gluteus maximus. So, the muscles in my bottom... <laughs> ..your bottom... That's not my bottom! <laughs> the hell? No. Remind me later. Get out of here, bear. EastEnders now, and Jean oh boy. Is having another one of her breakdowns. So, what's the best way to treat it? Tablets? Some sort of therapy? Well... Alfie had an idea. Oh no. <laughs> I have to fight just to get through every day, Alfie. Is Alfie gonna throw her out the window? Still a lose. I still I still get it wrong. <laughs> oi, oi, oi. Come on. It's all right. <laughs> Fancy an ice cream? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, back a Kalipo, you That's feel much good, better. <laughs> Talking of EastEnders, I wonder what the Mitchell brothers were like as babies. <laughs> Bit like that, I suppose. Yes, it's exactly Stephen like Fry's that. Planet Word. Stephen Fry, Stephen Fry. He's the chief presenter of QI. When I see Stephen Fry, it's hello and not goodbye. But if I'm in a hurry, perhaps I'll just say hi. Come on and don't be shy. Sit down and share a pie. He's the cleverest man in the whole world. Well, his name is Stephen Fry. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 He's out and about, filling his head up with even more information. This time about. <laughs> <laughs> About language and dialect. It's not all work, though. He's still got time to try and pull. Language, of course, is a kind of cocktail, isn't it? No, it's not. <laughs> not sure he's interested, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> With a lot of foreigners on this show, it wasn't always easy to follow what was going on. I mean, I can usually make out one or two words, like I could tell that this next fella was a fan of Betty Boo. How old is this footage? <laughs> and then some of them were just really happy to just say hello. 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 This week, Steve taught us all about reading and writing and the basic building blocks of any language, the alphabet. 
You probably learned to read and write as I did by using letter tiles or you had those sort of um, strips of paper around your primary school classroom with A for apple and B for bear and C oh, for yeah. that. cart horse or whatever it was. But the amazing thing about the system of an alphabet is you don't have to learn symbols. You just learn these individual letters that make the sounds. And once, the, once you do, anything is possible. You can just make up all kinds of fantastic phrases. I adore playing with... Oh, look. Look what we can have here. Playing with letters and words. Mm, me Old too. <laughs> I love playing with... Letters. Uh, there we are. Oh, that's that old uh, that there. And, uh, oh, what have we got here? Uh, mm. Oh, damn it. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was surprised to there. see an X Factor tart on Celebrity MasterChef this week. So tell me about your tart then. It's just so easy. No, it's not that easy. Don't tell them oh, it's, it's easy. It's dead easy. Absolutely dead easy. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the X Factor Tart! Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> Is it delicious? <laughs> That rare thing, an X Factor tart. And I must say, I did enjoy the opening song. All the contestants sang together. He's got an annoying voice. So to say. Let it judge on that plot on the opener too. Because I'd eliminate a couple people based off that. Housing market, she said to rediscover a new passion. I have a passion for crafts, and it turns cool. out so do you. I do. I'll be taking you on a tour of Britain's brilliant county and agricultural shows. <laughs> <laughs> I do love to wind Kirsty up, though. Where the hell are all my spatulas? <laughs> I don't know what it is. I'm sure girls don't steal kitchen implements. My boys just put it to totally alien use. I've got three spatulas and none of them are there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do love winding her up. One day she'll get me back, I suppose. She said about making eclairs. Uh, oh, that's oh. Nice. a note. Dear Harry, hope you enjoy this eclair, love, Kirsty. <laughs> and, uh, oh, stinks a bit. Uh, uh, mm, 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 mm. Oh, those are mine. Those are Loretta's. One looks like Claire's, the other looks like dog poos. I knew she'd try and get me back. So that's one haul. Kirsty ended up going to the Devon County show on a Todd, but soon made herself a friend, a beekeeper, complete with his own swarm of bees. This was a swarm that I picked up uh, maybe about a month ago. When Queen... you say it was a swarm that you picked up, yes. it was a swarm that you bought from no, someone? No, 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 it was, it was on a lady's bush. <laughs> Gonna turn nasty. <laughs> I've heard of beards made from bees, but never. Anyway, it keeps, <laughs> it, it keeps his bees for the honey, which begged the question... Why do bees sure. make honey? Because they can't carry the jars home from Londis. Yeah, do they feel like it? I'm right. Always keen to get involved, Kirsty donned the beekeeper's garb and got stuck in. One of the big attractions here is the bee and honey tent. Inside are dozens of competitions, but out back I've been zipped into a white boiler suit, taped at the legs, and given a pair of marigolds to wear. No bee is getting in here. Oh. <laughs> Oops. Sorry.
Sorry, Kirsty. I think that's 2 1, don't yeah, you? It is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did learn something new from Kirsty's Handmade Britain about how to serve scones. As we're in Devon, it's the Devon County show. Yeah. It's got to be the uh, cream first, then the jam. Devon scone etiquette means that if I put the jam first and then the cream, my scones will be marked down. But if I were entering them over the border in Cornwall, then it would have to be the other way round. Now I like scones from Devon. <laughs> God damn it. The cream on first and then the jam. But then I like scones from Cornwall with the jam first <laughs> and the cream. But, oh, which is better? There's only one way better to find, find out. out. <laughs> Come on, jam first. Get him. Ah, oh, shit. I think they both lost me there. Oh, they draw. Welcome back to TV Burp. Rodney talks to a teddy on Emmerdale. I believe you two have had a little chat. <laughs> <laughs> Man rests his hand on a dwarf wearing a bowler hat on Fame in the Frame. Well, I took a bit of a risk there. She's got blonde hair and a bit of black. She's got <laughs> and drunken sat nav on country file. After 300 yards on left. <laughs> <clears throat> Hello? Hello? Oh. Shrimpy? <laughs> yes, it's on violet. I've told you, Auntie, don't call me Shrimpy when I'm at work. <laughs> Man. Lorraine Pascal's home cooking made easy now. So, how is she making life easier for us this week? How about making French bread at home? How about going down Greg's? <laughs> <laughs> the French bread there is lovely and soft because it's English. <laughs> what I it's like really about hard Lorraine, to make good she doesn't French go bread. for fancy food. French toast, I don't I've got this kind of strange routine, and that's whenever I go on a long car journey, I'll stop at a petrol station about halfway, uh -huh. and I buy myself, of all things, a Scotch egg. Hmm, well, you might want to open a window if there's a, okay. if there's a passenger. <laughs> or turn your heater up to max and enjoy a smell. <laughs> <laughs> Lorraine showed us how the act of cooking can be beneficial in other ways. You've really got to work it to get all the proteins nice and stretchy and elastic, and that's what makes the bread so wonderful and chewy. But it's also good for getting out of the day stress. This needs to happen for 10 minutes, so I'm going to be a little while. <laughs> oh, me. Uh oh. I'm making the footage go. Okay, that's 10 minutes. No, it's not. That was never 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like the idea of taking out the stress of the day on your cooking. Obviously, I don't have time to bake bread, so this is how I get rid of my stress. I hate you! I hate you! <laughs> so, <laughs> what else is on the menu? I've got two canapes to make, both with ready-made puff pastry. The first one, the sausage rolls big night out, Oh, sausage rolls, big night out. <laughs> Sounds fun. I let one of my sausage rolls go out last night, and, uh... Oh, yes. How <laughs> uh, was last night? Oh, man, it was mad. He <laughs> went out with Mark and Art from the only way is Essex. Stretched him over, picked us up, took us to the William the Forty pub for happy hour. <laughs> we had loads of shots. Ended up with a sugar and a load of cocktails. Finally, we all went to Bollywood for a curry. I'm feeling really, really rough. Oh, in fact, I think I'm going to... That's the problem with you, sausage rolls. You can't take your drink. Oh, gross. A shock and awe, the story of electricity now, with no, our old friend, Professor Jim Al-Khalili. And Professor Jim offered us all sorts of insights into the world of electricity that really made you think. Imagine our world without electricity. It will be dark. <laughs> yes, 
Because it would be, yeah, it would be dull, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be. Thanks for that, Jim. Good job. I was surprised to see just how much electricity Jim's head could withstand. The execution of William <laughs> Penler marked the lowest point in the war of the Get out of there, Jim. But it wouldn't quite mark the end. I want to go. Oh, boy. Well, that was pretty strong stuff. I guess the rest of his brain cell. Hmm. Hmm. This week... <laughs> this week, Jim told us all about semiconductors and the Silicon Revolution. The new companies were in competition with each other to come up with the latest semiconductor devices. They made transistors so small that huge numbers of them could be incorporated into an electrical circuit printed on a single slice of semiconductor crystal. These tiny and reliable chips could be used in all sorts of electrical equipment. Chibi chip! <laughs> Which brings us to our TV highlight of the week. All right. <laughs> Brilliant. I was very pleased to see Frank Bruno make his TV comeback on the end of a phone on new drama Hidden. Hello. Oh. Get out of there. <laughs> what? Get out of your office, Harry. <laughs> Who is this? It's Frank Bruno. <laughs> Good to see him back on the box. What year was that? Oh. A little a bit younger. Maybe it's just Hi, a... Harry. Were you able to catch me on Hidden this week? Uh, yes, Frank, I, I did. Uh, tell me, are you appearing in any more episodes? Maybe it's just the lighting. Uh, hang on a sec. But... <laughs> hey! <Yeah. laughs> Hi, Harry. You still there? Harry? Yeah, tell me, Frank, on the show Hidden, uh, how come we could hear you but not see you? Because I was hidden, Harry. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, uh, you hang up. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. You hang up. You hang up. <laughs> so apparently there's two hiddens. I guess they didn't do a good job as hiding it the first time, so they made it again. 2011 one, though. Oh, 2018 one is Welsh. Okay, the 2011 one is the one of Philip Glinster. Uh, let me see. Small time solicitor Harry Venn uh, is reluctantly drawn back into his dark past after being approached by Gina Hawks. This sounds like a Philip Glinster show. <laughs> Hawks, a lawyer searching for a missing alibi for a client, quickly withdraws, quickly draws Venn into a deep and dangerous conspiracy involving the death of his brother 20 years previously. Yeah, this is definitely a Philip Glinster show. <laughs> <laughs> and when it, and which reaches deep into the heart of the British political system. This is four episode short series. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, that that's that's a quintessential <laughs> That sounds a lot like a Philip Glister show, alright. <laughs> That is it for another reaction to Harry Hill's TV Burp. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to leave it a like. If you didn't like it, don't. If you want to follow it, my social media links are all in the video description as well as names on my Patreons. If you didn't know, you can be a Patreon on me for as little as $1 or £1. You get extra direction videos as well as reading your comments up to there and sometimes more. With all being said, though, my name is Taffer Seen. It's been my 37th reaction to Harry Hill's TV Burp. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Also, if you've made it this far and you might be thinking, hey, he mentioned reading your comments, but he doesn't do that anymore. It's coming back tomorrow. See you next time.